Hello viewers, welcome to my Doctor Who themed YouTube channel, Who Ventures, and this is my review of series 11 episode 1, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, and to start with, I'm going to make a series of noises, because my body, my body, ah, ah, my body can't cope with feels, just, just, Feels it's the arm oh, oh music ten out of ten oh my gosh what's going on ah my body just has all these different ah oh, feels especially my arms it's like ah oh yeah <laughs> sorry I'll calm down now I've got my mm, lovely Jodie with me. And I'm, this is my new notebook for series 11. <gasps> ah! <laughs> uh, I made lot, lots and lots of notes. I made loads of notes. So I will put up photos of the notes that I made at the end of this video. So Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, 10 out of 10, obviously, 10 out of 10. First of all, yes, I would totally subscribe to you, Ryan, on your YouTube channel. Defo. So, ah, and then we've got, ah, YouTube, Ryan, I subscribed to you, he's got 37 subs. So, he's making a video about the greatest woman is known so obviously we think he's talking about the doctor and then he talks about learning to ride his bike and oh my gosh I nearly cried and we only went oh, like 30 seconds in and it was, it was um, Ryan's nan and Graham and there was he was there encouraging him to ride his bike and <laughs> Bradley Walsh it was so adorable oh my gosh I just <laughs> feels and that uh, relate relatable Ryan's relatable because when I learned to ride my bike uh, well when I attempted to learn to ride a bike I fell off, got on, fell off, and that was it. And I, I, that's why I couldn't ride my bike. So, commend Ryan for putting in a lot more effort to try to ride his bike than I did. Here's a little comic of when I tried to learn to ride a bike. So the oh, and this the place where they go to help Ryan learn to ride his bike. Oh my gosh! It's like oh, oh, eye candy. It's like oh, the most beautiful place ever. It's like. Then Ryan get um, gets really annoyed with himself and really upset. And they're on sort of a hill, sort of cliff area, and he chucks his back off the the cliff top area because he's really frustrated with himself. So um, Graham and his nan, who's called Grace, they. Um, go to get on the train home and Ryan's is left behind to go and get his bike back um, but he gets down to these woods and his bike stuck in a tree and then this triangle diamond sparky thing starts happening and it's like a spiral of squares 
and at first I thought it was the TARDIS trying to appear and then there's this big blue vase it looks like a big blue vase and it's like a meteor thing and it appears and Ryan touches it and then it's like does something to his hand because it's cold and he calls the police so then we see Yasmin on the beat and she's just like Judy Hopps because she's stuck on parking duty and there's these women arguing and one of the women smashed the other woman's windscreen with an army and she's just like she is just like Judy Hopps because she's stuck on parking duty so and so Yaz is like really frustrated that she, she's just got parking duty so she um, is asking her supervisor uh, if she can have something more interesting to do and as it happens um, Ryan called in a very interesting thing so she goes off to investigate the big blue thing and she gets there and she meets Ryan turns out they know each other because they went to school together and Yaz is like um, she's a policewoman now and then Ryan is a warehouse worker and he wants to learn to be a mechanic so he tells Yaz to touch the blue thing and it's freezing and then we see Graham and Grace on the train and, and Grace is just really fun, she's amazing and then um, the driver of the train sees something sparking in the sky and then the train um, crashes and so Grace starts going walking down the train carriage to investigate what's been what's happened and Graham's like no where are you going ah and Graham's a bit nervous and then the doors all the train doors are locked and the, the lights have gone out on the train and there's all these flashes and sparking electrics and the between Hathersage and Grinford I think that was what they said and yeah and then they call Yas and Ryan and Yas and Ryan um, speed off to investigate the train crash in the police car and then there's this big ball of tentacles it have full, look, full of electricity and it's coming down the train but then ooh, and the doctor falls through the roof of the train and then we hear a, a little snippet of the theme tune and then she gets up and she wants to investigate but she's looking at her pocket she says no Sonic Arg. and then she tells everybody to stay very still and then this tentacle thing saps people and it flies away back into the sky and then we get the scene which um, we already saw a preview of where she's like why'd you call me madam and it's the same and saying and Yaz says because your woman says am I does it suit me and and they look and then she's like I'm looking for a doctor and then they look at the power lights and doors and then they find the driver and the doctor's really um sad about the driver being killed and she figures that she must have died from shock of seeing the alien thing and yes it's like uh, I need to check the CCTV I need to ring this into the officers and the doctors say well, what are you going to say to them um, you, um, what, how are you going to explain what happened we don't know what happened and he's saying we need to investigate first and then the there's this guy on the train and he's called Carl Brian Wright and then the doctor's saying and she's like she can't say her she says team, gang, fam and she's, then she's all like I've lost my TARDIS and then 
Graham um, doesn't believe aliens. There's no such thing as aliens. And Carl just, just wants to go. He just wants to leave and says, we don't get aliens in Sheffield. And then the, um, the team are in the police car. Yes, Ryan, Grace and Doctor. And the Doctor is in their passenger seat. And through, if, and says, can we have the lights and sirens on? <laughs> oh, that was cute. And then Ryan's phone, he's got pictures of this, the alien thing. And we find, um, and then Ryan's got dyspraxia. And then um, we see that the blue thing, it, if they get to the forest, we find the blue things disappeared. And then they get the, we see the blue thing's been taken away in a van, and we see a top down in sort of view of part of the city with the streets of the houses. For I thought that was beautiful. And then we get to this garage, and there's two lads, and they've got this blue thing, and they put it in the garage. And one of the the lads is called Rahul, and he's finally finally captured this thing he, ta he gives a bit tells the other lad to go off to the pub or something and then he sets up this webcam and sits to look at this blue thing and then so there's been two weird alien -y things happening in one night so graham says i'll ask the bus drivers your the bus drivers know everything so he goes down to the bus station and starts asking the bus drivers but when the bus, they're just joking about saying, oh, my wife's gone karaoke. So he's just, so he don't really find out much at that point. And then Ryan's on Twitter, seeing if anybody's said anything. And at Ryan's house, um, the doctor's on the sofa. Um, like when the 10th doctor was in bed and... She's a sort of, she's collapsed by this point and she's sort of asleep. And the residual regeneration energy is coming out like the, like it happens with the 10th Doctor. And then Rahul, we've, well, Rahul is still watching this blue transport thing and it starts cracking and smoke comes out of it. And then this ball of tentacles is sparking electricity and there's like a electricity like surge wave across the city and then the doctor wakes up and she's still healing and then suddenly they've all got these little pink flashing lights on the collarbones and if the doctor realizes the the dna bombs and if they go off they completely melt your dna and then, so she, the doctor, um, reformats Ryan's phone so she can do something techy with it. And then there's a big robot creature guy comes out of this blue thing. And, oh, it's amazing. It's really good costume. It's really well done. It's really effective. And it's really scary. And Rahul's, oh, where's my sister? Because uh, Rahul, um... Uh, Rahul's sister was taken by this robot creature. So, and Rahul is sapped by the robot creature. So, the team are using Ren's phone to track the DNA bomb signal. Um, and then the tentacle ball starts sparking. And the, there's the big robot guy and the doctor's chasing after it. And then Graham's standing at the back and he says, Oh, now you're all running after it. That was funny. And then the, this robot creature got Rahul and he burnt him with eyes because this robot creature, alien guy, is from is really cold. And the alien guy broke his jaw and pulled out Rahul's tooth. And then the team find the blue thing and find out it's a transport chamber for the big alien robot guy. And we find out that um, 
Ryan saw these lines in the air and the, the square shapes appearing and he says he touched it and then Graham, I thought this was quite brilliant, Graham said another thing you're going to blame on your dyspraxia now that that was harsh because I have heard because if you're autistic then there's a chance that some people autistic people have it oh you're blaming it on your autism and when you've got that a disability oh it's really harsh thing to say when I say blaming it on your disability which I thought it was harsh and then that the doctor realizes the tracking's been blocked the phone's been blocked so the doctor said where's my sonic oh i can build one i'm good at building things and then yas and ryan are discussing the doctor being an alien and then they find rahul's sort of office space and they find all his files and is learn about his missing sister and there's a a video file on his computer and meanwhile the doctor is busy building a new sonic and she's got the goggles blow torches steampunk and she does sheffield steelworks and oh and she has this description of the of generation about how we evolve but we remember who we are i thought i was beautiful really oh and then Yaz and Ryan are watching Rahul's video and he talks about how his sister was taken seven years ago, his sister Asher, and they see his childhood pics of Rahul and Asher together. And then the doctor's made her sonic and she says, well, it's more like a sonic Swiss army knife, but without the knife, only idiots carry knives. Oh, brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. And then she just... Um, deduces that it must be two creatures wanting to fight each other so that's her first theory and um, the doctor's like it can be a bit of quiet and i'll be ready to roll and then um, we, we go to like night time in sheffield and there's a drunk guy and he's got he's got his kebab and he's chucking his salad out and this this robot and he thinks it's just somebody dressed up for Halloween. So he's start chucking his salad at him, as I thought was funny. But then the robot saps the guy. And then there's more sparks in the sky. And they find out the tentacle creature, find out from one of um, Graham's bus driver mates, that the tentacle creature is on this reef. So they're up there on top fighting this tentacle creature creature and it turns out it's sort of not really a creature it's like um some tech technology space tech it's gathering coils and it's weaponized biotech and then there's a hologram and it's a hologram of carl and the then the robot survives on the reef and um the doctor starts saying why have you taken his tooth and the robot says his name and it's like um T Z I M this is what it said on the subtitles anyway, T Z I M Tim Simshaw but um to, but the doctor thinks he's saying Tim Shaw. I thought that was funny. And then the robot he takes his robot mask off and he's got his, he's got loads of human teeth embedded in his skin all over his face. Oh, it was scary. I, I wanted to hide behind the sofa and I thought it was scary. After a while, it sort of reminds me of Noel Fielding makeup. Because Noel Fielding, um, as that's the kind of thing he he's done in his work. He's got a, Noel Fielding has a character where he's just got this. Um, bubbly eyes all over his face so after a while it did sort of remind me of that but it was a scary monster wow and then the robot guy um, from the place where he's from they have a ritual to decide the new leader so the ritual is to 
get a human trophy to take it back and you, they whoever like wins this sort of competition gets to be the leader so um the doctor finds out that um this robot guy has been cheating with the tentacle thing and that before they could do anything the robot grabs the tentacle thing and the, that he teleports away and it turns out he's hunting Carl and then we see Carl and he's crane because he works at a, uh, a builder's yard kind of place and then he's crane and Carl's a bit of a he's got a self-help tape and it's got affirmations on and that was really sweet and then the guy um, in the office is is talking to his um, granddaughter Daisy who's uh, called him up on Skype but then the robot alien comes and kills the granddad so I like how um, Chris Chibnall so setting up these emotional moments and they, you actually feel for the the, all of the characters they have a mo an emotional pull and solidity which I think is more than what Stephen Moffat did with his Eva. So that Skylark building services and the alien robot guy is climbing up Carl's crane to get him. So the team um Graham and Grace uh, evacuate the site but there isn't really many people there anyway but um, so the yells of the Doctor and Ryan they decide to go up the other crane to get across to um, Carl and rescue him so Graham and Grace are evacuating the site and then Yaz and Ryan um, they've got they learn how to navigate and steer the other crane to him yeah well first of all they climb up this other crane and ryan drops his torch then the aliens got into carl's cab but by that point carl's climbed up out of his cab and he's now balancing on the scaffold and the doctor is getting them all up the opposite crane and the doctor's craving a fried egg sandwich and then grace is um got a big got a plan and she's got all his ideas to stop the alien and she's amazing then yaz and ryan um have to steer the crane so the doctor can go across the cranes and get carl but the cranes get stuck and carl to cut and Carl has to jump so he holds on to his affirmations and jumps but the robot alien grabs him so he's dangling Carl over the gap and then and then the, the robot alien grabs Carl starts walking off with him and then the doctor has to do the big jump onto the other crane and she's, and she's like, oi, Tim Shaw. And the alien's got, he's got a face of teeth. And um, the doctor's got this recall thing from the pod the alien travelled in. And she threatens to destroy it. And she wants to know what they, they do with the humans they capture. And these aliens, they hold the humans in stasis pods. So they're neither alive or dead and they're just stuck there. The, the robot alien threatens to set off the DNA bombs and it's like a standoff where the doctors say if you do that I'll uh, destroy this and then the robot won't be able to get home. And then Grace is getting all this other plan done and then the doctor has another beautiful speech about how we evolve and stuff and the robot alien is i've wrote the robot alien is such a dick and 
Oh, well, there's me, but the Doctor added, added Sheffield Steel to the Sonic. That made me want to cry. Because I don't know if Americans will understand that reference or... But it's so, it's so touching because Sheffield was known, is known for the steel industry, but... But the steel industry, um, because of government people, has, like, died away and gone under. And it... And there's just that meant not I'm not from Sheffield, but it just I felt really touched when she said, and a bit of Sheffield steel. It's like ah, oh, baby, oh, I nearly cried. And then, then turns out she used the Sonic to put the DNA bombs into the robot, and he was gonna explode. But then Carl pushed the alien off the uh, the scaffold. And the doctor's like, you had no right to do that. And then, and then, um, Grace is trying to work something, and she falls off, and the the scaffold, and and she dies, and it's like, whoa, and this character, you think, um, because when we learnt about the the companions who thought oh she's going to be a semi-regular and she's like what and it's like can't the doctor do something but no grace grace just, she just dies it's like oh my gosh and then we cut back to the youtube video and we find out ryan the greatest woman he's ever knew is talking about his nan and we also found out Ryan lost his mum six years ago. And then we got back to the hillside. And Ryan's really trying again on his bike. And I like that it's not like a, oh my gosh, he can suddenly ride his bike. It's heartwarming. Is that he still can't ride, but he's trying and trying. And, oh... The doctor's watching him um, trying again and then they're at the the funeral for Grace and the doctor's with Ryan and asking if if he's when's his dad going to turn up and Ryan says his dad's not reliable and it's Grace's funeral and Graham's doing the eulogy and it turns out they met because Graham had cancer and Grace was his chemotherapy nurse and they fell in love and Graham's in remission and so then the doctors are a traveller without a ship and then they're at um, they're outside Graham's house just on the front steps and chatting and Yaz is talking to the doctor and then um, Yaz says you need a new outfit so they take the doctor to a charity shop and, the, and she picks out a new outfit from the charity shop oh, and Yaz buys her the outfit so adorable <laughs> and then the doctor decides um, she, she needs to build something else to if she builds this other thing she can get to transport herself to where the TARDIS has landed and it involves a microwave which is uh, quite a lot like Back to the Future and Doc I thought that was fun and then and Ryan is so cute because she says, um, breathe in, and she means herself. And Ryan goes, <gasps> and she's so, I love Ryan. And then um, she saps herself because she thinks she's just going to say goodbye to the team. And she accidentally takes all of them up into outer space with it. And then that's how it ends. They're all floating in outer space. Like, oops. 
and then we find out that the end credits it's gone totally retro with the credits and they are amazeballs I thought <sighs> the credits are amazeballs and then it was really good because then it said coming up and it showed all the guest um, actors who are coming into the show and then there was um, a trailer for the next episode so I asked mum, my mum and dad sat and watched it in the same room as me and mum said it was very good and it wasn't what she was expecting and dad said it was very good and he said it was gripping especially the crane sequence and he said it was very different to the original and my cat went And uh, so I think they all enjoyed it. Um, I just, I don't know how to process my feels. I just... So I have to congratulate all of the cast and crew. Everyone is amazing. It looked amazing. Sound was amazing. Music was amazing. Everyone's amazing. Hello Judy, you are amazing. Everyone is fantastic. Ah, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so full of love for everyone. Uh, I love it. Oh. oh my gosh. So many feels. So many feels. So I hope you have enjoyed this review. And thank you for watching. Yay.